the minutes of the previous meeting from August 18th, 2009. Uh, anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, or omissions on the uh, minutes? Hearing none, motions? Beth? I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second? Second. A motion having been made by Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. First uh, substantive item on the agenda under new business, the Winnick Woods site plan. Uh, the Town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review to expand the parking lot for Winnick Woods, a 71-acre open space located on Sawyer Road under Section 19-9 site plan review, and it's on for completeness and public hearing uh, this evening. If the applicant could step up to the microphone, introduce themselves, and hopefully the audiovisual works. Yes, it does work. And uh, make the presentation, the board will consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Steve Harding. I work for OST Associates. I'm your town engineer. I have with me tonight Julie Dooley from the Conservation Commission. We're here to present uh, the Winnick Woods uh, subdivision, or excuse me, site plan. Um, <laughs> let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> Bean somebody. Um, <laughs> I was going to try to increase the magnification if I could, which is... Go up there to the 21%. Is that, that do it? Right there. Top in the middle. No, the next one over. Right there. Right there. Do it? Yeah. It will. You want to go over where the plus sign is on the other side of the 21? Right here? Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Keep going. Is that too much? No more? Not sure. No. I got it. I got it. There we go. <laughs> Stuff to get used to your laptop. Two. Went too far. Should have played with this before I got the meeting started. We have copies too. Of this. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's good. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, the uh, presentation or the plan before you tonight is the expansion of the gravel parking lot off of Sawyer Road. Um, I'm going to try not to hit somebody in the eyes, so bear with me on this beat. This is the existing gravel parking lot. There's an expansion area to the top of the lot. There's an expansion area over here. Uh, currently, there's about uh, two to four spaces, kind of uh, 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 capacity for the, the parking lot in a kind of a haphazard uh, manner. In doing this, we'll have eight spaces. We're going to have uh, timber wheel stops at the end of each space to designate where the parking spaces should be. Hopefully, people will follow that, and it's usually it's worked pretty well. Um, the driveway setback uh, in Maureen's memo, she noted that uh, there's a setback to the side yard that's going to be greater than 10 feet by code. Uh, we have 35 feet there, plus or minus, so that should be all set. Um, there's also uh, question about what the clearing limits are, and we kind of tricked Maureen, we labeled this, this uh, line here, siltation fence, and then over here we've got clearing limits, so it's kind of well hidden on the plan. I apologize for, for doing that to you, Maureen. <laughs> um, that's the limits of the plan. There is one tree in the center here, it's a hardwood, I believe it's an oak, but I'm not entirely sure. That would have to come out, and then there's one over here, I believe that's a 12-inch oak that we are preserving. So we're, we're just um, going to lose one tree, one substantial tree during this, uh, during this project. The uh, gravel space is about 2,000 uh, 2, square feet of new gravel area. Um, it's a relatively modest change. All the stormwater drains back into the lot, uh, so there should be no uh, adverse effect to abutters. There's no utilities, no lights, no, nothing uh, along those lines, so those really aren't applicable. There's um, a sign here that's going to be impacted by the expansion. We're going to move it down to here. And then one other change we made from the workshop as a suggestion from the board, we're going to change the connection of the trail uh, coming out of the parking lot. Currently, we it's here. We're going to move it away from here to get it away from those parked cars. So that should make it uh, easier for users of the, of the lot. Um, there's a, I think that's about all I have for presentation. It's a, basically a, a very straightforward review. I think the improvements here is you're going to be able to turn around in the parking lot, not have to back out onto Sawyer Road. Sawyer Road 
as you know, it's a pretty heavily traveled road. We'll move quick, pretty quickly. This will be able to minimize the number of people that need to park alongside Soria Road. So I think all in all, it's a, it's a great improvement. And the way it's configured, you could expand it uh, to the left as you're facing the board. So if there ever wasn't a need or a desire to do that, you have the capabilities to do that in the future. Answer any questions you may have? Oh, I have none. The, um, the first item we have to consider is completeness. So why don't we take that first, uh, and I would ask the town planner, are there any open items that you see uh, concerning completeness, Maureen? No. Uh, any questions from the board concerning the issue of completeness? Uh, Barbara? Motion for the board to consider. Go ahead. Um, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for the site plan Review to expand the parking lot at Winnick Woods, a 70-plus acre open space parcel located on Sawyer Road, be deemed complete. Second. Uh, motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel and seconded by um, Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion for completeness? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Uh, and we had noticed this out for a public hearing. I'm assuming at this point the applicant has nothing further to add to their presentation. That's As such, I'll open the public hearing and invite members of the public to come up and make any questions, uh, give us any questions, comments, thoughts. Going once. Oh, go ahead. Uh, my name is Bruce Moore. I live in 1108 Sawyer Road. If you went 25 feet from that old farm road, you'd see the end of my house. On the right in that plant? Yes. Okay. No, yes, yeah. as you look at it on the floor. And uh, uh, we're the only house in the middle of Winnings Woods. We're the old uh, stone house with the attached greenhouse in one end. And myself and Jan Chapman, my wife, lived there. And we actually worked with uh, Maureen and the planning and the uh, Conservation Commission to come up with the original parking lot and try to keep it from being closer to our house. And, um, we did send an email to the uh, committee asking that you please consider uh, improving the buffer between our house and the parking lot. If you expand the parking lot, it's just a matter of privacy. When you walk out my front door, there it is. And there are three uh, hemlocks that were put up before. It would be nice if that were, especially since you're expanding the parking lot on the side towards our house. Uh, originally, we were hoping you would just go away from the house uh, in the expansion of the parking lot. So it would, it would be nice if you would consider that. And uh, just uh, for your information, you know, living next door, we get to see what goes on. Then we come home from work in the evening and see uh, the cars in the lot, and I'd say, you know, two or three times a month, there's like a, a bicycle group that comes, and they do fill up the parking lot, but on the average, it's two or three cars in the lot on a regular basis, and it, it's popular on the weekend, so sometimes you'll see four or five in there, but it does accommodate five or six cars as it stands right now. And uh, people are pretty polite to us in general, but it would be nice if you would just put up one thing on the bulletin board or the, the information thing that you put up the key off. Uh, just kind of telling people that, that it, 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 there is private property next door and uh, people have let their dogs go and they come run over to my dog. Mm -hmm. who's in the backyard, confined by an underground electric fence. And there hasn't been any incidents, you know, where the dogs have hurt each other, but that could happen. Sure. Because you know how dogs are, they're sort of like a pecking order to every pack. And so it'd be nice if there was something that said, please keep your dog on a leash until you get at least a couple hundred yards down the trail. And it would be nice if you would ask them to, uh, to leave a half hour after sunset because in the summertime the cyclists 
will have lights on their bikes. And they'll be out there riding until past 9 o'clock at night. I've been out on my deck before with people coming down the trail and at, at late at night or sitting out in the parking lot after they've all had their ride and chit-chatting and, and uh, hanging out after, after dark. So it just that's our only request is that if you could improve the buffer since you're going to enlarge the lot and and uh, kind of have the rules of the trail there so that everybody will be friendly and nice to each other. Do you have any specific suggestions for the buffer in terms of what specifically uh, you You know, there, there is a huge amount of hemlocks in the area. Is that, that, is that what's along your driveway? Yes. Yep. Yeah, lining one side of my driveway, although over the years I've, there's seven of them have died and there's one more dying right now that probably will end up getting taken down. But also heading towards the parking lot there was like a, a hallway of hemlocks mm. also. And a couple of them came down in that uh, Patriots Day storm. And that those were on town, the town's. Yes, they're all they're on the town property. The other ones are right on our line. And uh, so the, the hemlock seem to thrive there. I mean, there is a problem sometimes having all one species of tree, and then if something comes along and, and wipes it out, then you're left with no trees. That's right. Just evergreen. You know that the hemlock, the spruce, and and the white pine. The uh, tall red pines, they don't seem to be doing good. There's a bunch of them along the edge of the road, and, and a number of them have, have not survived well over the years. Excuse me, can I just ask, Steve, would you be willing to move this um, over that way so that we can see the line of firs that line the um, edge of the Chapman's property? Yeah, if you just go, you go on the blue bar, pull the blue bar over to the right, click on it. The lower left corner of the keypad works best. We've got an arrow in the bottom right hand corner. <laughs> yeah, or. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Other one. Other one. Other one. The other right. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Try to go the right direction. There we go. That's So you can see one. that's the end of my driveway, um, the end of my uh, garage that you see there. And the front door is right next to that. So what so are that, what that are the line, firs that are being shown? Those are hemlock. Okay. But you suggested they're quite tall and old. There, there have been over the years, like I said, seven of them have died, and there's a couple further down the old farm road that are not doing so well now that may may not make it. But um, you know, but I'm not worried about that because on that little space right next to them, that's sort of like a, uh, you can see where my driveway comes over and connects, mm -hmm. that little space in there, my driveway's a, almost like a circle on the other side of that. I've planted a number of rhododendrons and American cranberry, and they're doing, they're doing well. And I'm hoping, you know, as the hemlocks die, the, the, uh, the other evergreens get bigger and and help me on that side. What, what is more direct is where the hemlocks are now, I think they're delineated up. Are they not? Those, the three? The three over here in the middle. Those, are those the, bushes? the three hemlocks that were planted? Yeah, they, they're called out as bushes. There's oh, they're bushes. There's, three. There's one there, one there, one there. Okay. Yeah. And, and those are doing well. And, uh, uh, so if you could put some more further on down, especially where you're going to expand the pipe lot going in that direction, just a couple because that is kind of the row of hemlocks that is that has got hit in the storm. So if you could put some more around in there, I actually uh, planted a rhododendron on the town's property. Uh, I had talked to Maureen about that, and the rhodes are good. They, they take a while. This one took a hit when a pine tree lost branch and kind of fell around it this winter. But it's doing well. It's about 
a four feet tall, and they can get to be 15 feet tall, so they do a good job. Plus, you get the flowers and, the, and all that kind of stuff. So anything like that. But those are more expensive than buying. Could I, ask, could I just ask you a question first? The, um, the expansion that you're referring to, that those are the three spaces that are on the back? Yes. Okay. On the downhill. So the, really, the expansion is not coming out toward you, toward you. It's going... Well, just in the rear right. parking lot. On the rear. The rear. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just, you know, we were just, the way it was originally designed, you came down that drive, and everybody was supposed to park over to the left away from our house. But, of course, you know, people do try to pull straight in. It's close and, to the And trail. I have no problem with that as long as, as we can keep our privacy and, and just have a good buffer between us and them. Because uh, natural buffers are, are what I like, and it's mostly wooded. I have a very small clearing in my backyard, and it's almost all done. <clears throat> I have some comments sure. um, based on what you've said in my visit today. So I visited after five with my dog and my four-year-old son, and the parking lot was full. I pulled in um, just as someone was pulling out, and then so there were three cars, and then um, somebody elected not to pull in because the parking lot was full. So in some cases, people might jam the parking lot right now, but um, I, for my single experience it was heavily used and in need of expansion um, I went to the kiosk and I was surprised that um, other than a trail map there was no information about dogs or when you were allowed to visit and somebody came running uh, or two dogs came running at me they were off leash and I love to see dogs off leash mine was on the leash so uh, but I was I said oh is this off leash you know I don't, I don't see any signs and so I am sympathetic to dogs running into your yard and I think you have a good case for some signage um, maybe leave your yeah. dog on leash for 50 yards yeah. um, I did take note that I thought your house was pretty far away from the parking lot and well buffered by trees and uh, I live in a really close-knit neighborhood and so by my measurements on this map um, your <laughs> garage is 100 feet away from what will be the closest um, parking space to your house. And, well, it's, 20, and it's 25 feet from that line. The, you see the line of trees? Uh -huh. My garage is 25 feet from there. From there, okay. Yep, and then okay. that's it, you know, 80 feet over the drive Yeah, maybe 80 probably, feet. probably uh, 10 or 15 feet, and then you do have that land. There, so. Yeah, so and it seemed pretty well buffered to me, and, and, and I, I think you would have uh, maybe, you know, a less pretty visual view if a house were there. So I, I guess I'm, I'm not as sympathetic to your request for planting trees um, at the town expense. That's just my view. And, um, but I, I really appreciate your comments on the dogs and the um, timing after sunset. I think that those are great suggestions. All set. Anyone else wishing to speak concerning the application? Uh, does the town wish to offer anything? I don't know. <laughs> I guess, you know, it just echo Liza's view. When we looked at it, we knew we were expanding, but we were expanding to the back and to, sure. to the left and away from the house. So we felt that the, the area was relatively well buffered as it was. Sure. And that's why we didn't propose anything. <laughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to speak about the leash leash issues. The town has a dog ordinance, and it, it, my recollection is it allows dogs to be not on a leash in the unimproved areas of the old town poor farm, the Thomas Jordan land, mm -hmm. as well as in the back end of Fort Williams. Beyond that, dogs are supposed to be on a leash within Cape Elizabeth. And, you know, I, I agree with the sentiment that it should be posted. I would get nervous if the planning board started developing its own leash provisions <laughs> on a separate piece of the town property. So, uh, you know, it, I think that the point's well taken. It, it, it should be posted. And furthermore, you know, the issue is, you know, if you want to put limits on, on the parking lot in terms of, you know, hours of use, that there would be no objection. Well, that was my question. What are the present limits on use? I, I don't think there are any, there are any, I mean, as far as I was, right. I don't believe there are any. Okay. And is that something the town council would need to take up? I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a public, it's, it's owned by the town. That's what I was going to ask. It's within, my understanding is it's within the rights of the planning board 
during site plan review to establish hours for any applicant, and the town would not be exempt from that. Thank you. I do need to run to another. No, that's fine. Out from disinterest, so. <laughs> Thanks for. Any questions? No, I, I don't uh, have it. What about buffering? Uh, I would defer it to the wishes of the planning board on that. Thank you. Thank you. You can step up again. Jan and I do feel the need for the buffering, but if it's, if it's not within your budget, we would like to be able to work with Maureen to maybe purchase some more evergreens ourselves. Uh, we, we used uh, gnome landscaping before to do the work, and they do a nice job, and, and uh, we'd be willing to do that. If, you know, I, I understand the limits on town budgets these days. I mean, I conceptually, I have no problem with that. I just want to make sure it goes through. Is it DPW who, who manages? Actually, um, this no is open space, and it's, it's usually managed. It's under the Conservation Commission, and sure. they report to the Town Council. Okay. okay. So as long as it's okay with them, it's certainly okay with me okay. and the board, I assume, yeah. it's on, on your nickel. Um, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, any other discussion on the other issues that were raised? I mean, I, I think the sort of the hours, um, I have no trouble with putting a condition on the site plan uh, hours, but I, I'm sort of in the dark part of the bad pun <laughs> as, to, as, as to what would be appropriate. I mean, I, you know, I want to... Well, Williams, the sunrise, the sunset, but again, who's going to ever enforce it? Well, but also, I mean, realistically, if you're out there a little past sunset and you're in the parking lot for a half hour, 45 minutes, yeah. I, I think the, 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 the point is if it sort of gets to be a, a deeper problem. We want to have something already out there that they can mm -hmm. enforce. I mean, mm -hmm. Stay in an hour or two, you know, and, and getting a little raucous. I think Bruce's suggestion of half hour after sunset was reasonable. Okay. Really. I wonder yeah. if there are any, are, are there any other properties in, in the town mm -hmm. that have any hours associated with them? I mean, I know Fort, Williams, open space. Fort Williams does. I'm talking about open space. Or, or in terms of open space, I, I believe the only one is Fort Williams. And keep in mind, Fort Williams has a fence around it. Right. Right. Well, it has other facilities that require, I think, closing, so to speak. This, yeah. this is woods. I know. I mean, that. Yeah. <laughs> Another option, under the comprehensive plan, the Conservation Commission is required at some point in the next three years to hold a meeting with all the different users of the open space. And they, they're aware they have to do that. They're probably going to do it next, early next spring. And I mean, one of the issues is to look at conflicts. I mean, in, if, you were, if you were not ready to set limits, you might instead put a condition on it that the Conservation Commission review that issue. I, I was at the Conservation Commission meeting. I was really hoping Judy would get up and say this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the looks of Judy's Where, face, I don't think Judy's going to do this. <laughs> Where the, they, they under, they're, they're looking hard at Winnick Woods right now. They've spent a lot of time and effort in building trails, uh, and they know they have some management issues they need to work out. They've already given me mm -hmm. a list of signs that I need to prepare. So... This may be something you could send to the commission with uh, a request for them to please look at these issues if you weren't ready to actually make this decision yourself. I, I kind of like that idea. I do too. Yeah. I mean, I could clearly envision an evening use for this, you know, some sort of Audubon trip in the woods if something were discovered there. But, and I wouldn't want to put that out there as a no, as a condition of a site plan. I couldn't, hear what you, I couldn't hear what you just said. I, could, I can envision an evening use, a potential evening use that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be a problem, you know, an Audubon trip in the, in the evening or you know, later evening if something were found out there that people wanted to walk in the woods for. And I wouldn't want to put that as a condition of site plan review. I, I kind of like the idea of the Maureen put out there. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah, have there sure. been any teenagers partying out there late at night or anything? Yeah. If you could step up to the microphone, we can't get any of those comments on the record, and it doesn't broadcast from the uh, audience. I, I learned that last yeah. night watching the tele. Yeah, uh, that came up when uh, actually uh, town manager Michael brought it up. 
before when we were doing site plan review of the NASA plan for Winton's work. And uh, I think, you know, there's such a regular patrol with the uh, police force down Sawyer Road. It's sort of like this big loop around the town. And uh, it hasn't been an issue. No, it's good. All right. Um, I, I want to just say I'm sympathetic. Um, and I was wondering if we would consider maybe doing it in the converse, putting it as a condition, but it would subject to review. But it would be limited to such time as the Conservation Commission could revise it. Revise it. I think that's a great suggestion, because I know that in Robinson Woods, actually prior to the land trust uh, it becoming land trust land, that was a big problem yeah. of kids going in and having parties and leaving garbage. Yep. Uh, it still is a problem. I back problem. right up onto those woods. You know, it's still a problem. I, I think if I, I'm very much in favor. I mean, I think we we don't necessarily have to give the abutter everything he asks for in terms of the landscaping, which costs money. But I certainly think we could put a limit onto the hours to make it a half an hour, an hour after sunset, and that way we have something we can. People have something they put their teeth in if it becomes a problem. If we don't do that and it becomes a problem, then you're sort of starting all over again. Right. And so I would be very much in favor of putting some kind of a condition on it. And I also would like, and I don't know how to do this, make sure that the Conservation Commission posts something about the, the dogs. And, and I don't know how we do that without, do we make that part of it, Maureen? Or, or um, put a condition on the approval that requires signage about dogs. Okay, I think we should do that too. In hours. Hours in dogs, yes. In, in, in a minimum. Mm -hmm. I want to shift gears and ask Steve a question about the plan based on my site visit earlier today. I heard from a user that snow removal can be a problem, and he was under the impression that there wasn't a lot of room for the town to deploy. To deposit the snow, and in your opinion, has is, has that been a problem in the past? And uh, if so, will it be addressed at by the this workshop? Uh, Dick Bowman was here. We originally had this sign that's kind of angled there. Mm -hmm. We had it placed here, and he thought it would be better if we move the sign over to this location mm -hmm. so we could push the snow up into this area, gotcha. move the snow off to the edges here. By clearing this area out, I think you're going to have know, ample space to move the snow around. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been out there in a while, so I'm not quite sure you know, where, the, where the issue is going to be. But to me, it looks like there's, there's plenty of space to, to move snow. I agree. It looks like it, too. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Oh, sure. As, as, soon, as, soon as, as long as it relates to snow. Uh, it, in relation to the issue in the winter, they, they did a pretty good job of plowing, but it's a very steep road, and so I went over there a number of times with, with uh, buckets of sand and helped get people out of the log, because they were stuck. Once it, once it melted them and then froze, they were having trouble getting up the steep access to Sawyer Road. So having a little sand on that would probably help, because that's, that's what I saw. People get stuck, and then I would go over with, with a bucket of sand and help them get out of the lot. One guy had to, had to get a tow truck to get him out of there, because he slid off to one side. I'm certainly sympathetic to that, but I am quite certain we can't put that as a condition. <laughs> No, but I'm thinking maybe you could advise those individuals to give the town a call, right. give them a heads up to so they can throw some sand on the lot. Yeah, thanks. <coughs> Any other questions, comments, thoughts, motions? Mr. Oh, wait, I, motion. I do need to close the public hearing. Here, let me remind you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Um, Motion for approval, findings of fact. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting site plan review of the construction of a parking lot at Winnick Woods, a 70 plus acre open space parcel located on Sawyer Road, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Two, the existing parking lot was designed to provide a buffer between the parking and the nearest neighbor to the west. Three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, 
the application of the Town of Cape Elizabeth for site plan review to expand the parking lot at Winnick Woods, a 70 plus acre open space parcel located on Sawyer Road be approved, subject to the following conditions. One, that the applicant limit hours of usage to close the parking lot one half hour after sunset, subject to review and revision by the Town's Conservation Commission. And two, that the applicant post signage regarding use restrictions including hours of usage, and that all dogs must be leashed at all times. I, I, I'm thinking that the comment from Mike McGovern was that um, uh, dogs are to be leashed only in certain areas of the, of the woods, and I'm wondering if no, no, the, the, the signage should be uh, consistent with the town ordinance on that. Well, I, 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 my, that my understanding of Mike's comment was Tom's motion does do that, that there are only two places in town that they are allowed off the leash. Is that correct? And and this, are, this those, is not one are those connected to no. this trail system? Oh, I thought they were. Pardon me. Okay. okay. Isn't there another do, point, two, for three? What was that? That Arby, you have a question. To revise to show a limit of construction line that preserves the existing vegetation. I think that's done. That's done. Oh, that's done. I'm sorry. Okay. So we have Tom's motion on the floor. Any other discussion on the motion before I ask? Since you? we're closing the park, do we or the parking lot? Do we also need to open it in the morning? Yeah, I wondered about that. Do we want to put a half hour before? Half hour before sunrise. Uh, it doesn't sound like that's an issue, though. I guess it'd be okay for first day, and then it's closed all the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, accepted. Okay, so we have a motion that's been amended. Any other questions or comments before I ask for a second? How was it amended? I didn't. Jim wanted it inserted in there. The, the it opened. The motion is stands that the park opens in a half hour before sunrise yeah. and closes a half hour after sunset. I think Tom just forgot. Or I'll give you the word. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to the point. That's fine. Um, can I offer a second? Okay, motion having been uh, made and amended by Tom Dolan and seconded by Beth Richardson. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda tonight is Cross Hill Lots 1 and 21 subdivision amendment. Juan Perez, how do you pronounce it? Febles is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to shift the common lot line of lots 1 and 21 in order to include an existing driveway entirely on lot 1 <laughs> under section 16-2-5 subdivision amendment. I'm the owner of um, 53 Wells Road, Lot 1 on Cross Hill, and 57 uh, Wells Road, Lot 21. Uh, I'm requesting uh, to uh, move the line uh, right here on Wells Road uh, between uh, Lot 1 and Lot 21 so that the uh, driveway that is now existing on lot one is fully within lot one. Um, I may uh, consider the option to sell one or the other properties in the future, and I wanted to clean it up so that there wouldn't be any problems of fighting among the future <laughs> neighbors and uh, just make it a lot cleaner and um, more defined. Um, it's a very small area. And I think you can see it right there in your, uh, in your uh, map, in your plan. <clears throat> so um, with that being said, if you have any questions, I'll, be, I'll try to answer them. Go ahead. How was it that the driveway ended up uh, on the lot line? How was it? Well, I bought this house back in 1976. <clears throat> and um, then subsequent to that, I acquired the um, the land next door, and when the uh, I paved it, you know, not thinking that the paving had actually extended onto the other 
property that I had acquired. And then when they uh, began to set pins, I realized that uh, about a third of the driveway was on the other lot. And uh, something that, you know, since I owned both properties, it wasn't an issue. But now that, uh, you know, I'm thinking uh, of moving on and perhaps uh, dispose of the properties, I thought it would be a lot uh, cleaner to do that. In, in conjunction with that, I have also, um, which has nothing to do with this, but for your information, I have also moved the electrical service to this building here, to this area, because it currently runs from this pole uh, through, the, through the, the yard between the two. Uh, so I'm, I'm just trying to clean up the whole, separate both properties so that they can be wholly independent and free and encumbered of each other and avoid future issues you know, with new owners or whatever. You know. I guess it was just a lack of foresight on my part. <laughs> Do I need to open a public hearing on this? No. This is an amendment to the subdivision because they're both part of Crossville. Is that correct? Okay. Um, so, any other questions from the board? No. Comments, I, I don't think we plan? need a site walk or a public hearing. No. No, I don't, I don't since, think since one owner owns both of them, I don't think it uh, makes a bit of sense. All right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, any motion for the board to consider? Uh, yes, a motion for the board to consider finding of facts. Let's see if we have a one and a two. Yes, one, uh, Juan Perez Febles is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to adjust the lot one and 21 common boundary so that an existing driveway is completely located on lot one, which requires review under section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Two. The applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Juan Perez Febles to amend the previously approved Cross Hill subdivision to adjust the lot 1 and 21 common boundary so that an existing driveway is completely located on lot, lot 1 be approved. Second. Motion having been made by F. Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Next item on the agenda is uh, Edwards Resource Protection Permit. Uh, Jeffrey and Hurry Edwards are requesting a, an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 152 square feet of RP2 wetland for a sport court on their property located at 59 Hunts Point Road, comma, section 19-8-3, resource protection per permit. This matter is on for completeness. If the applicant could step up to the microphone, introduce him or herself, and make the presentation, the board will consider it. Uh, good evening. My name is Jeffrey Edwards. I live at 59 Hunts Point Road. I think I was at a workshop with the board a couple of months ago on a different issue, but some of the same facts were discussed at that point in time. Uh, this is an application for an after-the-fact resource permit. Uh, and uh, as indicated in the supporting diagrams and documentation, uh, the sport court is already in. Uh, this is not a request put in the sports board. It's already in and uh, as set out in the wetland delineation done by Mr. Frick, uh, there is somewhere between 100 and 152 square feet of uh, encroachment into what has been delineated as RP2 wetland. Uh, and uh, again, it's the, the uh, sport court with the offending fill has probably been in place for at least two, if not more, years. Uh, it's obviously installed at some point in time after Mr. Frick did his initial wetland delineation in uh, September of 2003. Uh, I've owned the property uh, since uh, July, I expect that since March of 2008, and uh, 
it was in conjunction with getting after the fact permitting for the construction that's board court that, uh, that Mr. Smith uh, identified that, that there was this uh, uh, rather small encroachment into the wetland area. And, uh, I guess my basic uh, application here is that, uh, again, the wetland itself that was filled is, is relatively small. It's basically revegetated. Uh, it's uh, all filled. It's, it's not the sport court itself. Uh, and I would request uh, uh, that, that the, uh, the, an after the fact resource permit for what's already in place. It's kind of an awkward way of applying for an application. <laughs> Applying after it's already in there. And, and these are always uncomfortable, but what's, what's on for today is completeness. You understand Absolutely. that? So, yeah, um, I understand that. Uh, there's, but there's, in terms of completeness, I guess, uh, as I've indicated in my cover letter when I submitted my application, uh, I would uh, request that, that the board find that there is completeness uh, and that uh, there be a waiver with respect to those items that I've identified uh, specifically. Uh, I would request a waiver with respect to uh, items uh, 2, 5, uh, 6, and 9 uh, in terms of the criteria for a, a, a resource that's a permit under, uh, under section 19.83 of the uh, zoning ordinance. Okay. Thank you. And again, for the most part, I would submit that the request for the waiver is based upon the minimal nature of the encroachment. Sure. Well, two of the four, the town engineer supports your request for the waiver. You are aware of that, right? Yes. Okay. And the board members have any questions, comments, or thoughts concerning the <laughs> issues concerning complete Sorry. As well as the... <laughs> Am I talking too much, Jim? No. <laughs> um, then the... Uh, we can, we can move the matter forward. Any other questions, Jim? Just curious how this all came to light. Uh, it came to light when I, uh, after I, uh, uh, after I purchased the property, after we were under contract, found out that there were uh, no building permits on file uh, for a couple of projects, including, including the sport court. And in the process of, of doing that, uh, uh, and Mr. Smith was at the property and, and determined that there was an encroachment or thought there was one. So we had Mr. Frick return. He had done a delineation, a wet mm. delineation. Prior to the construction of the sport court back in 2003, he came back in January, February of 2008 to see if there was an encroachment, did a report to, to Mr. Smith, which is in the file, and then, and then did the, the large diagram showing the, uh, the encroachment, uh, uh, having been called back out there to, to report out to, to, to Bruce, to Mr. Smith, and to Nate about what was out there. Uh, and then Mr. Smith issued an after-the-fact building permit, I believe it was a building permit, not a wetland. Permit an after fact building permit subject to uh, either getting an after the fact uh, resource protective permit or removing the offending material. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so that, that's where it came to light. The, but the, uh, I guess the reason it was only found out after I purchased the property was because of the project was built without a building permit. Right. So there, there was a, a wetland delineation that was obtained at the time to, make sure, to avoid the encroachment, which unfortunately happened anyway. Yeah, okay. Well said. Yeah. I just had a quick question. Re removing the offending material would not remove moving the court itself. No, it wouldn't. Okay. It's, 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 again, it, it's, it's not. I, I understand. It's, it's just, it slopes it's, down. and It's, it's, it's my, just, my only question. Yeah. So let's stay on the focus on the issue of completeness so we can stay on, on track here. Barbara, do you have any questions on that? Well, I have no questions about completeness. I just have a question about what the encroachment is. But let's do the completeness first. And, and I have just a quick question for, for Maureen. The, um, Town engineer supports two and nine. Do you have any reason to not grant the waiver, the four waivers that they're looking for? No. Okay. I would open the floor to motion, so. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make motion. Please do so. The board to consider motion for completeness, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jeffrey and Henry Edwards for an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 152 square feet of RP2 wetlands for a sport court located at 59 Hunts Point Road be deemed complete. 
Second. Eliza. Um, motion having been made by Tom Dolan and seconded by Eliza Quinn. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Uh, then the next question we have is both the site walk as well as the public hearing. Uh, I personally have no reason to no. site walk. I, no. I'm I don't familiar with to. the site. No. I mean, do we need to do either? Do we need a public hearing? Well, the only question is we're on for the next meeting, correct? Meaning well, I have a meeting. question about and, that. And noticing it out, well, do we, do we need to? You're not required to hold a public hearing. Right. No. But so we could, have, we could back. approve if it tonight. If you are going to hold a public hearing, you have to send a notice out that says we're holding a public hearing. So you would have to wait until next month. Right. But is it possible to consider the approval? This you month? can grant an approval without a public hearing. Well, I would suggest that since well, we've got an independent opinion right here by the town engineer that it's all been revegetated in this 152 feet, and I'd like to suggest that we approve it tonight and not make this man come back again next time. I support it as well, and because it, the sports court has been there for a while, my youngest son has played on that sports court. I don't see any reason for a public hearing or to, or to have the Edwards wait. Well, I have a, a question from, from the plan. It seems to me that the sports court isn't on any encroachment. It isn't. So what's encroaching then? It's the fill, Barbara. It's the fill. There's, fill. there's fill that uh, this is basically a frost wall on a frost wall, and, and, the, and the encroachment is the fill that's been uh, put there as kind of a bulwark to hold the uh, foundation in yeah. position. I it's, see. It's, it's, it's on a slope. And now that fill has been completely revegetated. So yeah, it's, it's grown according back. to yeah. Oh, yeah. Associates. Yep. Right. I'd like to suggest we just approve it. Yeah, I, I'm starting to go in that direction mostly because I just don't see realistically us asking him to haul it out of there. No. It's, it could make no. the situation worse. So um, I'll open the floor to motions. Well, well, before we do, I'd like to make a comment. I, I totally agree. Um, however, I'm concerned about the precedence of it, that to the extent any homeowner makes a, any form of a modification to a wetland and then a subsequent homeowner who takes subject to that knowingly, um, that we're just saying it'll be okay. I recognize the de minimis nature of this. I recognize the fact that to go in and say taking it out would be a bad thing. I also recognize the Albert Frick's letter saying that, you know, in his professional opinion, that there could be some uh, variability with regard to it. But I just don't know how to, how to in any way, do something about the it's okay. And, and I, I echo that concern. I always try to approach these after the fact with some sort of blinders on and say, let's pretend. Let's pretend this is here and it's not constructed. Would we give this permit? And, and my answer in this one is probably not the way it's sitting right now. We probably, had we had the opportunity to comment ahead of time, simply ask that it be moved or constructed in a different way. But that seems uh, somewhat unrealistic at this point. And given all those factors we've discussed, I have no trouble distinguishing this in the future. But I'm, I'm, this is the second one we've granted in, in less than two years. And I'm getting a little nervous about what other ones are out there. Well, I do. We, we have had other after-the-fact issues oh, that have no come question. in front of us that we have not granted, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And I guess what distinguishes the one that I am thinking of with this is that the town engineer has reviewed this, doesn't see a problem, that wasn't true with the other one or ones that I recall. Mm -hmm. This is de minimis, the other ones were not. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones had more a likelihood of being able to re replant, remove, revegetate, everything <coughs> else. So I guess I, I see this as different enough from some of the more significant things we've dealt with um, to, to support just going ahead with approval. I'm curious, did you pay a fine or did you have to pay a significant amount of money for the after the fact building permit? No, they, they were issued. They were issued. I mean, well, I, know, I, I believe there was a fine, but I think it was paid by the prior owner. Now that, right. now that you refresh yeah. my memory on that, that yeah. there is a fine involved in building without a permit, maybe. And the sequencing on this was? Uh, on this, uh, I would just point out that, that I think that the prior owner did make the effort to, to locate it without approaching because they did hire Mr. Frick to do a wetland delineation in September of 2003. He did do a delineation 
unfortunately, the way the project went in, when it, it was, if you took a look at it, it's jammed right up against the, the driveway in, the, in an attempt, I think, to avoid the wetland encroachment. Uh, so I think there was a good faith effort to, to avoid the encroachment. It wasn't in disregard, and it didn't make the investment for the prior owners to have Mr. Frick do the wetland delineation so that they had some guidance. And but, they didn't, but they didn't pull the building permit. So uh, they spent all this money on a wetland site, uh, and, then, and then built it. If so I had been there at the time, I would have done it myself, and I would have gotten a permit. But I, I, I can't speak for them. I understand. They didn't do the permits. I mean, they hired competent people to do the work and fill through the cracks. And the sequence, as I understand it, is you, you, you didn't know it before purchase and sale, but you did know about it before you actually closed it. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, I just want the, that the, record the, to be That's why Mr. Frick came out and, and did Again. this delineation. He did that at my request to, to, to clean it up. And, and answer questions that Mr. Smith had about you know, the location of the of the, uh, of the improvement in relation to the wetland delineation. So and this this, di this wetland delineation, I think, was in the town's file. Yeah. This one was An earlier version of it was already in the town's file. I, I don't think it's going to have any bearing upon my decision tonight, but I would like clarification with regard to: Is there a fine imposed? I don't know what the monetary issue was, but I can tell you the only person that I, that, uh, that assesses fines is the town manager. It's not very often. What does happen, um, and I don't know if it happened in this case, but usually if you apply for a permit after you've done the work, it's double the, the permit fee. Okay. So it, it easily could have been whatever the value of the sport court was, $10 per thousand times two. Okay. Maybe that's what you're referring I, I to. I may have misspoken. It, that's probably what was. That was the money I think that changed hands when the permitting was obtained prior to my closing was the the, the payment of what was required for and, the, and who paid for the he paid the prior it, for the whole permit well, for the permit for this and then a couple other projects that were inside the house that had not been permitted and they ended up paying double because they were after I, I suspect that is the case but they, they I didn't mean to suggest they were fine but you know that there were there was some payment. enhanced payments yep Can I make a motion, please? Sure. I think Barbara wants to make this. Oh, there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Get arm wrestle over. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a motion to approve. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jeffrey and Horry Edwards for an after the fact resource protection permit to fill 152 square feet of RP2 wetlands for a sport court located at 59 Hunts Point Road be approved. Motion, ha motion having been made by Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? All, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try to avoid teacher problems. <laughs> sure. Have fun with that court. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, no, Beth, Bar Barbara, yeah. I'm confused. Is it? I think you got it. Next item on the agenda is the town center amendments. So we'll invite Maureen to make the presentation. Sure. This is from here. Absolutely. Thanks. I, yeah, well, I, I don't to you're, do that. No. Um, so what I gave you tonight was basically the same cover memo you received last month because mm -hmm. I thought it was useful to keep the tie between the comprehensive plan and what you're working on tonight and it is my intention um, to continue to keep this in here in your forwarding to the council if you make that decision tonight so what you have is your recommendation of the comprehensive plan that says um, you should develop more mixed-use buildings that include commercial uses on the first floor and allow residential uses on upper floors you also have a recommendation under the housing section of the comprehensive plan to increase the permitted density of multifamily housing units and mixed use buildings located in the business districts. So in the effort that the planning board finished recently with rewriting the VA districts, you actually um, allowed um, more multifamily units in a building as long as the first floor was non-commercial. You also increased the density in the VA district. You're doing the same thing um, tonight for the town center district where you're allowing multifamily um, units to be more than 50% of a building in the town center as long as the first floor is non-residential. And then you're also increasing the density that's allowed. Uh, right now uh, you need 7,500 square feet per unit 
and this would increase the density so you would only be required to have 3,000 square feet per unit. And those are the changes proposed this evening. Forgive me for not picking up, uh, up on this until tonight, but um, I noticed that the density requirements for a rooming or boarding home is one bed per 5,000 square feet. So that is now you know, less dense than multifamily housing, which were presumably you know, every unit would have a kitchen. In. And then I, I didn't see that rooming or boarding, boarding home was defined, at least in this section. It is defined in the zoning ordinance, not in this specific section. Okay, good. I didn't look. Thank you. Let me do the definition if you need to hear it. Oh, I, I would like that. That'd be great. We have noticed this for a public hearing, so after we have. Yes, I think there's one person. Right. So we're going to go through it quickly in terms of the outline because we've done that uh, in our workshop session, and then I'll open the public hearing and we'll take our comments and then we'll. In the, in, the, in the section of the zoning ordinance, it has all the definitions of rooming or boarding home as a house or other residential structure that is maintained wholly or partially for the purpose of boarding for compensation, more than two residents and not more than nine rooms, and that does not provide a supported services program, which we have to look under the definition of services, supported services program to know what that is. Thank you. So, yeah, I, I'm curious to know how people feel about having um, rooming or boarding homes have a less, having a less dense Yeah, that's, not, that's actually what I was thinking of. What's the effect of leaving it? Yeah. Do we want to match them up? Do we want to leave it the way it is? We want to encourage multifamily housing in a mixed-use building, but discourage or sort of leave the same, the standards for Right, and housing. I go back to the comprehensive yeah. plan, housing goals. And well, I, I think one of the things that we talked about in the, uh, the comprehensive plan committee mm -hmm. was we had somebody actually <coughs> come in and talk about how you can develop more affordable housing and how, um, and how the one thing, the one way you can make it affordable is by reducing land area because the land is so expensive that if you have to have one unit per 5,000 feet, then you need that much more land in order to develop the property. And I think the rooming and boarding homes can go into residential neighborhoods. The, um, the multifamily housing in a mixed-use building cannot. So I would, from my own perspective, I would keep a lesser density in the residential areas and allow in the town center and, and also in the BA district to have the density be higher in a mixed use building in order to create more affordable housing to make development in those areas um, more logical for for the owner of the property so that they can have more units. Gotcha. But and isn't this ordinance specific? to the town center? This is specific, but the definition of rooming and boarding home is not. You're not going to see, you can't, it, I don't know that we want to change the density in one area for rooming and boarding homes and not in another area. I, I'm not sure that's good policy. I don't know, people can. I, I'm trying to think through the effect, and, and the effect of this would be that uh, by lowering the square footage requirements, we're encouraging more mixed-use, say, multifamily housing and mixed-use buildings, which are full unit, Maureen, correct? Yeah. And, and, and room, go ahead. I think you want to be a little careful with adjusting the rooming and boarding home definite, uh, density I without agree really with that. taking a look. I mean, rooming and boarding homes is really a different type it's of totally living different. unit. It's not a full dwelling unit. Right, right. Um, I've, in the community we did a lot of research on this and at the time we put it in there we did the research we thought this would fit no one has elected to put one in i'm a, i'm just a little concerned if you start changing that density you, you we haven't spent time looking at what the consequence of that would be and i'm not in favor of changing the density for rooming and boarding homes i, I just want to think through liza's point which is are we having an under, is there a possible a possible unintended consequence of Putting, pushing it the other way, and the answer is the intended consequences were encouraging full units, multifamily housing, and by lowering the requirements, we're encouraging that over and above 
rooming and boarding homes because you need you would need more land per unit. If I right. That, but you've yeah. got back the, town the comprehensive plan saying we want to increase the density. We want to have more of these. So. Uh, oh no, I agree. Yeah. I'm just I'm trying to make You're sure not all that. All by yourself on the multifamily. Uh, no, I, I I agree with that. I, I'm I'm just more concerned that there's something out there that we may not have thought through to some effect. And I the effect, I only see that one effect, which is what we're trying. Yeah. To. Yep. And so we currently have no rooming or boarding homes in the town, is that right, Maureen? Well, none pop into mind. There, yeah. I mean, there might be someone who's renting out a couple of rooms that's been doing it for a long time and never triggered any kind of review. Right. Um, okay. okay. So by doing this, we're encouraging... What we want to encourage. What we, yeah. But it's only in two areas. self contained well, units. It's not going to happen well, next door to you. Why don't I open the public hearing and take the comments, because that may, that may uh, foster more discussion. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak concerning the proposed amendments to the Town Center District Zoning Ordinance, you could step up to the microphone, identify yourself, and the board will take your comments. Good evening. Uh, Peter Constantino. I represent uh, Slick Rock, who owns uh, property on 349 Ocean House Road which is in this plan area. Um, um, I, I, you know, I'm for that amendment with the density change. Um, I have done three other town center projects in uh, different areas. And most of these projects are, are multi-use projects. And they vary uh, based on the market of how much office and how much residential uh, these different areas support. Um, Cape Elizabeth seems, uh, for the amount of square footage I can build on this particular lot, I can't fill it with all office. So it's, the market's not there to, uh, to fill the building. Um, so the residential part of this is uh, uh, really big in making this development project work for me. Thank you. Um, and I have uh, done some work with Maureen. We've talked about this quite a bit. And I've been working on it for a couple of years now. Um, but I've had a really hard time trying to get that office part of, you know, fitting into the way the, uh, the ordinance is right now with the town center, but having more residential would help offset that and uh, help fill the building and uh, hopefully help with the uh, retail or office space on the first floor also. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. What, what is that type? 3 349. It's the one right next to the driveway of the high school. Gotcha. Just south. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? So, I'd like to open the floor to motions then. Barbara? Oh, we have to close the public hearing. Well, if nobody has anything, I'll make a motion for the board to consider. Go ahead, Barbara. Mm -hmm. May be it ordered that the town center amendments, which increase the density allowed for multifamily units, be recommended to the town council for consideration. Second. Motion having been made by Barbara Schenkel and seconded by uh, Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Motion carries 6 nothing. I'd like to entertain Oh, we have, a, we have a plan to sign before we adjourn. And Mr. Chair, um, in light of the events of last night, I thought it might be appropriate if uh, our town planner would just give us an update as to what occurred with respect to shoreland zoning, because I think it might inform some conversations that we were having. Okay. Um, so the planning board sent a recommendation to the town council for text amendments and map amendments uh, about three days after your public hearing. Um, I received, I was able to uh, get a response back from the Department of Environmental Protection on the maps. Um, I had sent the maps to him before the public hearing, but it's the same month that they're receiving all their ordinances and they got back just as quickly as they could. And uh, what we found out is that on, on Old Colony Lane, which is the um, a map amendment that we got the most amount of comments at the meeting, um, that's the one that's been identified as moderate or high value for wildlife and had what we call the black, heavy black line that makes it a mandatory 250 foot buffer. Uh, the DEP said that because that was a densely developed area, they'd be willing to pull back the heavy black line um, to the point where there would not be a mandatory 250 foot buffer. 
This was the same treatment that we used with Great Pond in um, the last time we did the shoreland zoning amendments. So I prepared another map uh, for the town council and submitted it to them as an option. Um, so the recommendation of the planning board still went intact and then there was this optional map with an explanation of what the change was and whether or not they wanted to uh, pursue it. And at the meeting last night, uh, the council, um, we advertised, sent all the maps out. Uh, the council did adopt the map amendment that was the option. All the other map amendments that were uh, originally recommended by the planning board were also adopted and they adopted all the text. There was a serious amount of uh, concern that there was uh, a lot more impact on property owners with these new amendments. Uh, there were property owners who expressed concern with restrictions and um, the, general, the general presentation was that there's really no new restriction on properties other than what we already have. One, two, that the major restrictions on private property are not coming out of the state shoreland zoning um, but out of the town's local wetland regulations. There was some discussion about um, potentially changing our local wetlands regulations, um, but in the end, um, the, there was no effort to actually follow through with that. So those have been adopted. And, and the reason why I'd asked for that is because I really want to publicly commend Maureen for her acts last night. I think that what you did to represent this board uh, was terrific. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion? To, to adjourn. All in favor of the motion? <laughs> I stand adjourned. <laughs>